Hello, in this video I'm going to show you the, the, the latest progress and update on the Dado motion sensor. The, uh, the, this sensor is a very highly specialized uh, motion sensor that is programmable. It is very specific in terms of how it detects presence uh, or motion or, or, or foot traffic. Um, so the system comprises several things. One is the, L the LCD touchscreen is the, the graphic uh, to touch interface for the system and that can be mounted on a wall in, in, in your in a main area It could be mounted in a closet if you don't want to see it. it can be mounted anywhere you want to mount it It just needs to be accessible um, And in some cases this sensor this system is is sort of a, a daily interaction um, In that you can use it for purposes other than just opening and closing automatic doors um, So in addition to the LCD touchscreen you have an actual sensor and this is the sensor which would would mount above a ceiling or behind a wall and would require about a half inch diameter hole. So I've just got a short three foot cable on this just for testing purposes, but in a real world setting, the, the cable would be whatever length it needed to be from the, the, the LCD touchscreen to your sensor. It can also have up to two sensors on it. So you have an A sensor and a B sensor, one in the room that you're in or and one in the room on the outside. So in other words, you can have the motion sensor open the door in, in both from both rooms so if you just want to walk back and forth you can you can program it to pick up the foot traffic in the direction of the traffic and specific um, zones so speaking of zones this the system you can see the, the area here there are four by four zones the sensor works in, in a method of uh, it's an array it picks up uh, thermal energy or thermal heat in an array uh, four by four so a total of 16 zones and so imagine that you mounted the sensor in the ceiling looking down on the floor and imagine that the, the, the white boxes, the four by four boxes there, those are your room divided up into 16 quadrants, okay? And so that, those quadrants may be, depending on how, the, how high the sensor is, let's say that those quadrants are four feet by four feet each for a total of a 16 by 16 foot room. So the way the sensor works is, is I'm going to wave my hand over it and you can kind of see uh, let's just call each box a pixel just for simplicity's sake so you can see that as I move my hand over different areas of the sensor it is exciting that that the, those pixels uh, I'm turning them on and off so the motion sensor is very programmable um, again you have A and B sensors each sensor will be independently programmed and independently set up each each sensor can have its own contact closure or RS-485 output, so you can connect it to any automated system, any home automation, um, any alarm system. So, um, for example, you could turn A on and off. Let's say we don't want A on, but we want B on. So, like I said, this is sort of a, it can be a part of your daily, daily interaction in that, let's say that you may want to have some privacy and you don't want the door to be opened. Uh, accidentally or, or intentionally by anybody. So turn off A, you could turn off A and B. Let's say you want to turn them both, by, both back on during normal business hours, for example. You can determine different modes. There are several modes to trigger uh, the contact closure. Um, one is, is uh, just a, a regular, uh, what I call um, se selectable mode. Put it in this mode in A where you show the dots on the bottom and then you select what pixels are going to allow the, the, the contact closure to close or an event to be fired to your home automation or, or door. So in this case I've selected these, since these pixels here and it reverts back to normal watching mode after a couple of seconds. Here is back in watching mode. So now uh, if you look in the lower left hand corner here you'll see a C1 pop up which means contact closure 1 has fired because I've moved my hand over any one of the pixels. Okay. Another mode is um, a directional trigger mode so that I can put it in, I can set up a direction here so I could let's, let's choose for simplicity's sake anything on this first row is, is my trigger number one. Okay. Number two, anything on the second row is the second trigger. So you have a sensor trigger one and trigger two. Okay. So the way this mode works is, is any traffic that moves from 
the first row across the second row will fire uh, the contact closure or, or an event. It, and it won't fire if the traffic is moving the other way. Okay, so I'll demonstrate with my hand. So as we move up and over, up and over, you see the C1. So, but if I move back the other way down, you don't see the C1 because it, it knew the direction and you, you triggered it in the, in the right way. So in other words, traffic moving towards the door could fire the door to open. Traffic moving away from the door wouldn't, wouldn't cause it to open. And these can be precise uh, areas. So in other words, let's say that this is a congested area and we only want specific foot traffic to, to, to fire the door. So let's go down and select just a very specific region of trigger one is here, trigger two is here, okay? So it will, work, it will go back to its, its typical watching mode. So now, as I move my hand up, you saw the C1 fire, but if I'm moving my hand downwards, it doesn't fire the C1, which is the contact closure, because we were moving in a specific direction. You can change things like uh, the contact closure method, normally open, normally closed. You can change the sensitivity of each sensor, A or B sensitivity, by touching on a specific zone to select from 1 to 16 degrees of sensitivity. There's a buzzer on it, so you could turn the buzzer up, on or off, and set three different volumes on the buzzer, and the buzzer will allow you to have uh, it act as an alarm system if you want to. You can lock the screen and require a password to unlock the screen. You can blank the screen out, turn the screen completely off if you don't want to have it lit up. Um, you can have the, you can adjust various, there's a number of other settings I won't bore you with, uh, delay times between trigger one and trigger two, reset time, which means let's say that somebody walked into a room and they sat down in a chair, okay? The reset time means after a certain amount of seconds, and you determine those number of seconds, how long is it before the sensor just starts ignoring that fixed heat source, whether that's a person or a dog or whatever, to say that some, a lamp got turned on. Well, uh, anything that's a heat source is going to trigger the door, so the reset time allows the system to reset after a certain number of seconds, saying, well, we must have, we've, somebody's come in here and sat down, or some heat source has been turned on, and we need to ignore that and go back to normal operation uh, after that. So that allows you to not get stuck if, if the heat signature of the room changes. So um, again, uh, there's the sensor. It's less, maybe three eighths of an inch in diameter. It will have some other apparatus mounted on the back of it so that you can flag off certain areas as well. So you can have a sort of an aperture like on a, uh, on a lens that will open and close and move around so that you can get even more precise with your with your uh, sensor. And each sensor, you can have two sensors. And again, this will have four contact closure outputs. Uh, so you can select and program up to uh, different events to go out different contact closures. Or RS-485 with serial communication. You can also have it um, have contact closures go into this. So in other words, you could communicate with this with RS-45. You can also communicate to it with contact closure. And there are a number of other features that are currently being added to it, but that's the gist of it. Gives you a good overview of what the system is. And uh, this can be found at .odor.com and will be available very soon for sale. Thanks for watching.